This morning, we are beginning the Lenten sermon series. We are beginning it, Susan, <laughs> based on the I am statements of Jesus. And the first of these statements Jesus makes in the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John, where he says, I am the bread of life. Now, that's a very interesting statement because the day before, Jesus had been with his disciples when a large crowd followed him up a mountain. He thought that they needed food, and he asked Philip where they could find food, and Philip had no clue. So Andrew, another of the disciples, suggested that they use a boy's lunch, two fish and five barley loaves. Jesus took that, those provisions, thanked God, broke the bread and the fish, and there was enough for everyone. Over 5,000 people were there, and there were even leftovers to spare. Then Jesus went further up the mountain by himself, leaving everyone else behind. And the disciples went back down by the boat, waiting for Jesus to go over to Capernaum. And they waited and waited, and Jesus didn't come. So they decided to go themselves. And they ran into rough seas in the middle of the night. And then, lo and behold, here comes Jesus walking on water and gets them to Capernaum. So the next morning when the crowds awoke, neither Jesus nor the disciples was where they were the night before. And that's where we pick up in our reading today. So hear now these words from the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what, mu what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven. It is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me, will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So in the passage that I just read, we find this crowd that has literally been fed miraculous bread that gave them sustenance, and they're chasing after Jesus, trying to find him. Now, they don't seem to pick up on the full significance of the similarity between this and an earlier event in Israelite history. But Jesus feeding the 5,000 on the mountain is similar to God providing manna to the Israelites in the wilderness. 
that heavenly provision lasted for 40 years. And this crowd seems to want that kind of provision, more than just one meal. Maybe they're thinking that Jesus could miraculously multiply loaves and fishes all the time so that they wouldn't have to work or worry about going hungry. But they seem to have overlooked that a miracle has taken place and that miracle must have come from God. Jesus, however, after providing for their physical health the previous day, is now concerned with their spiritual health, something that has eternal importance. The bread of heaven gives life, not just physical life, but eternal life. And we see that Jesus can provide both of those since he fed actual bread one day and announces that he is the bread of life the next day. Jesus, in Jesus, both human and spiritual needs are met. He shows that the body and the spirit belong together and that God is concerned about both of them. For life to flourish, we need both physical and spiritual sustenance. We need actual bread to nourish our bodies, but we also need the life-giving words of Jesus that nourish our souls and lead us to a relationship with the Lord. It is this relationship that leads us to eternal life. So we require both of these things in order to thrive. Now, the reference to the bread of heaven should bring to mind two illusions for both the crowd in Capernaum and us today. The first, as I've already said, is that manna in the wilderness. This type of bread from heaven gives us physical sustenance. But the second illusion is to the word of God, which gives us spiritual sustenance. Isaiah talked about this a lot. So the crowd in Jesus' time would have picked up on it. However, it has added significance for us today because in the first chapter of the Gospel of John, John says that Jesus is the Word of God made flesh. So we see that this bread of heaven that Jesus is talking about is Jesus Christ himself, he is the bread of life that sustains us spiritually. Now, all of us listening today probably take our physical sustenance seriously. I doubt we need to be reminded to eat or to feed our families. At least I know I don't have to be reminded of that. However, I wonder if we are as vigilant about our spiritual sustenance. While the food we eat gives us the physical strength and stamina to live each day, our relationship with God gives us the ability to withstand all the difficulties that life throws at us. So my question today is, how is it with your soul? Is it well fed? I know that for me, I lived decades of my life without partaking of the bread of life. While my physical needs were met, I was spiritually malnourished. I didn't read the Bible. I didn't have an actual relationship with Jesus. Now, yes, I knew who Jesus Christ was, and I went to church, but that was really about it. Uh, I didn't pray much, and I didn't spend any significant time in Christian community, being around other believers and learning from them. Now, that wasn't God's fault. <laughs> God had been working on me, wooing me for years to try to um, encourage me in a relationship. But I had avoided any prolonged contact because I had my life under control 
uh, and didn't think I needed any help. Now, I realized how little control I had when I was going through my divorce. That spurred me to take Disciple Bible Study, which I've talked about before, uh, and that changed my life. Because as part of this small group, I finally really read and studied the Bible and wrestled with what's in there and how that informs my beliefs and my life. Uh, and I got to know Jesus Christ and have a relationship. I found out for myself that Jesus is the bread of life that can nourish and sustain. Now, since that time, the Lord has sustained me through a good many difficult times. One of those when my father was in ICU and ended up dying. And when I got that call, I grabbed some clothes and went to the hospital. And for the next five days, my mother, sister, and I were either in ICU or the waiting room or nearby. Some of you have done that. It's grueling. Um, but I found out at that time, and that was really the first time I had really found it out, how important the bread of life was for my sanity and my sustenance. My relationship with God got me through those gut-wrenching days. Because of that relationship, I was able to see and feel God's presence in what was going on in that waiting room or in the room with my father. I found comfort in scripture, and I even would read the Psalms to my daddy when I was with him. I prayed a lot, and I was embraced and comforted by friends and lifted up, not just by them checking on me, but by their prayers for me and my family. During those extremely difficult days, we were sustained and nourished by the bread of life. Knowing God is with us, for me, is really the only way to get through these tough times. Because we're all going to encounter them. But I learned during that time the importance of a relationship with God and what a strong foundation it gives us. Jesus Christ came to bring us to faith by embodying the love that God has for us. The Lord was willing to become human to show us the full extent of that divine love and to assure us that we would never be alone, no matter how tough our circumstances might be. Jesus' life and teaching all point to a relationship with the Lord. Now, Jesus, when he fed the 5,000 on the mountaintop, I think intended that as a sign for those people that pointed the crowd to a faith in the living God. But they latched on to the physical nourishment as an end in itself. They were too focused on the needs of the flesh to be concerned about the needs of the spirit or the soul. I think that we can be that way too. I wish our souls would growl loudly like our stomachs do when we're hungry. Um, my soul doesn't growl, but I do think that it can give me very subtle signs when it's in need of sustenance. For me, these signs can be a longing for fulfillment or an unsettledness where I just feel like I need some peace and don't quite or am not quite able to find it. Sometimes it can be just the need to slow down, to spend some time in prayer with God or just in silence or to be out in nature and see the wonders that God has created. But I believe if we will pay as close of attention to our souls as we do our bodies, we will feel when we need that sustenance, which is all the time. Now, you may be wondering exactly how can we feed our souls? Well, for me, it involves a few things. 
spending time reading the Bible because that is the written word and how we get to know what God has done. Prayer. I have dedicated times of prayer like in the morning, but I also tend to just pray throughout the day, trying to have conversations with God all the time and about everything because nothing is too small for God to care about. I also have developed deep and meaningful relationship with Christian friends. These are people I do life with. We have lots of fun, but we are also there for each other in difficult times. I know that I can call them and get prayer or support when I need it. And we all need people like this. These are the people that God puts in our lives to help sustain us in difficulties. And then I have continued to be in small groups because that's a place where we can talk about our faith with others who are also wrestling with the same things we've been reading. Now, all of these things can be used together or separately, but they all help us get the spiritual sustenance that we need. So the point of all this is our spiritual health is just as important as our physical health. And we need to focus on both of those. My friends, we all need to partake of the bread of life, to have a relationship with the Lord. It is this relationship that ena enables us to flourish because we will be spiritually well-fed. So I urge you to take time to assess the state of your soul. Is it malnourished? If so, ask God to feed you with the bread of life and do those things that will do that. If you are well fed, keep doing it. It's just like we don't eat one meal and then don't eat again. We have to maintain our spiritual health because it's an ongoing process. The Lord is always ready to provide the sustenance we need to thrive. All we have to do is accept it. Thanks be to God.